Today, we are talking about boxing. <laughs> Hiya folks, welcome back to the show and our self-build extension journey that we are on and all oh, the joys that we are going through right now. Still don't have bifold doors. You know, a little bit earlier on in the project and I said that we knew we were gonna have some lulls coming up. Well, oh man. Anyway, enough about that. It does mean that we can get on with a couple of kind of smaller jobs that need to be done. Ideally, we would be doing this after we've done the knock through, but we might as well get a bit of a head start and get as much as we can done, done now. And that means getting some of the boxing framework built we can't plasterboard any of the boxing yet because the boxing needs to run all the way across the top of where the bay window currently is and we can't really get that section of boxing in until the bay window comes out. But as I say, we can get a bit of a, a head start over here and I figured I can show you my approach to that. Have I mentioned we do actually have at least some windows now. We've got basically everything in apart from the bifolds, although that's been a comedy of errors as well. They've managed to, well, one of the panes of glass is broken in that one, so they're coming out to replace that. The back door had the wrong sill, so they're coming out to replace that, which means that the back door is only kind of half fitted at the minute. And as I say, we're still waiting on the bifolds. Oh, and by the way, top tip for you, we are filming this at the end of March. Don't rely on March or April weather for anything. Last week, we had glorious sunshine. It was like 17 degrees. And today it's been snowing and it's forecast to snow all through the night, which isn't unusual. It's very possible that you'll get frost and snow all the way through into April time. So don't rely on a couple of warm days in March to think that you're through the worst of the weather because you are almost certainly not, not in the UK anyway. Anyway, as I say, I've made a start on this already because the uh, electrician's coming soon to do all of the first fix well kind of the remainder of first fix electrics in here before the plaster has come because there's quite a bit of electrics need to go behind the plaster board so i'm kind of getting everything ready for the electrician in a way some of it's already in but it's just making life as easy as possible so he knows where he can run cables because obviously a lot of stuff can run in the boxing that's going to be up here hiding this big soil pipe we do need to add a couple of access panels later down the line to uh, things like the air admittance valve and there's a rodding point over there as well and we'll probably have an access panel up here because I think we'll have a whole world of junction boxes and things in this corner here where a lot of the wiring is going to kind of terminate. Eventually it's going to go through the wall somewhere where kind of here-ish. It'll go through the wall here, maybe up there. I haven't quite worked it out yet but it'll go from there through to the consumer unit, which is, I can see it over there, but you can't. Anyway, so the crux of this is, is that we don't want the boxing to come too far out in the room and we don't want it coming too low either. So about the lowest we can get away with, or about the highest we can get away with, is where I've put this button in here. Can you see it? We can't really go any lower than that. And that gave us our starting point to set the bottom of the boxing and then I want to know how far it's going to come out so that it clears the soil pipe but again doesn't come too far out into the room. So what I did was I measured out from the wall to the front of the soil pipe to get our absolute minimum width of the boxing. Now bear in mind that we've got this funny little return on the wall, this little jutty out bit on the wall, that is 65 millimeters so I've added that on to the distance that we got from the soil pipe earlier. And then on the far right hand side of the boxing over here, that's the distance that I've come out from the wall. Sorry, that bit of wood at the back there is a bit confusing. Let me just move that. So you can see the four cables coming down there, they are going to supply each pair of lights in the ceiling because there's going to be eight ceiling lights all together or eight clusters of lights. And then down the right hand side, I've just screwed a piece of wood to the wall which is the distance from the soil pipe plus the 65 millimeters. So the front of that bit of wood is pretty much exactly in line with the soil pipe. 
And again, it's hard to see on here, but there's a string line attached to the corner of that bit of wood, and that runs all the way across to the other side of the room. Unfortunately, it's very dark up there, so it's hard to see, but that is the end of my string line just kind of dangling down there. And that is the distance off the wall that we talked about earlier. So basically the distance to the front of the soil pipe. What I've also done as well, and this just is to make life a little bit easier for the electrician, but I've screwed a board to the wall. It's just 18 mil ply all the way along the top there. And that's just for fastening cable clips onto to give a nice run for cables all the way from one side of the room to the other and that gives us our 50 mil it used to be the safe zone but i can't remember what's it called the uh, permittable zone or something anyway the route that you're allowed to run cables in a room is within 150 millimeters of a ceiling so i've got some big long battens here that's those bits of wood down the right hand side there so i've got some big long battens and the first thing i need to do is rip them to be at the same angle as the angle of the ceiling So this is going to be one of those tricky jobs where uh, <laughs> I'm going to show you the, uh, the the real world version of this, not the heavily cut version of it, because uh, as I say, it's a bit of a tricky one. But actually, before I start on this, a couple of podcast recommendations for you. I've been meaning to tell you about these for ages and I keep forgetting. If you're into construction and building stuff and uh, you're a tradesperson or whatever, there's a podcast from across the other side of the pond. It used to be called the Protractor Podcast and it's now called um, Contracting Simplified. And Martin Holsinger was kind enough to have me as a guest on the show a little while ago and I promised I would give him a shout out. But with there being so much backlog of videos to edit on this channel, I just hadn't had a chance to do that. So Martin, I am sincerely sorry it's taken so long for us to give you a bit of a shout out. But his podcast is probably one of the first trades oriented podcasts that I started listening to oh, a long time ago, several, several years ago. And I really found it quite inspirational and I highly recommend if you are a tradesperson, there's loads of really good trades podcasts now, but back then the, there was none really. He was kind of the pioneer of doing this sort of work. And some of the guests that he's had on the show were genuinely inspirational. Not me, by the way, but I mean, some of his older guests were really very, very interesting. And it gave a really good insight into some of the best construction companies. I think mainly over in the States and Canada, but go and check it out. Brilliant podcast if you get the chance to have a listen, especially I'll try and include some links in the description below to some of my favorite episodes, because as I say, really inspirational, a lot of stuff where you're really seeing how best practice construction is carried out in different parts of the world, which is unfortunately something that, well, this is why we're building our own extension, because we couldn't find any decent builders. Anyway, that's another story. And another podcast I want to give a shout out to is uh, Workshop Banter. Keith from Rag and Bone Brown and Matt from Badger Workshop have put together a brilliant podcast, very enjoyable, called Workshop Banter. Highly recommend having a listen to that as well. Link in the description below. I haven't been listening a huge amount of podcasts recently because I mainly listen to them in the workshop and I haven't been in the workshop that much. But there's a couple that are definitely worth checking out. As I say, links in the description below. So go and have a listen. Anyway, right, let's get this kind of vaguely worked out where this is going. It would help if I had it the right way around, wouldn't it? So let's work out what we are doing with this. So 
We've ripped it to the angle of the ceiling and it's basically just going to sit on the ceiling like that. But we want a vertical, a, a plumb edge on the front, which is why I've ripped it to the angle of the ceiling. And it's going to sit in line with that end batten over there. And then we'll just screw it into the rafters. So the first thing I need to do is mark out the rafter locations, which are there, there, there. That'll do for now. I can do the rest once I'm kind of up there. Now, these are going to need crazily big screws because it has to get through this bit of wood and then through a whole load of insulation and then eventually at some point it'll hit a rafter. So I'm going to counterbore these a fair bit just so that the screw is quite recessed in the wood, if that makes sense. Drill some holes. This is one of these jobs, it looks like it's... Sorry, how rude. Yeah, a little bit of boxing, it looks like it's going to take kind of five minutes, but this is going to take best part of a day to get all this boxing framework built. Excess of these screws, right? I think I'm gonna count a bore with a drill. So I'm not gonna get deep enough with uh, with this. No. Right, I couldn't find any smaller screws, so I'm just going to have to live with this. I hope it'll be all right. These are big six millimeter screws, which is a bit excessive for this because there's no weight on it. I'll just see if we hit the joist. No, it's not long enough. Either that or I'm missing the joist. I don't think I am. Screws ain't long enough. Amazingly, I don't think I've got long enough screws. I've got 100, 100 mil, could do with 120 mil. Uh, no, look, I did find some five mil screws, which I prefer to the six mil. I think my only option here is to counterbore these a little bit more. That's got it. Yeah, that's solid. Who is this? So just to show you where I got up to, because the camera battery went flat, but I managed to get the first kind of row of vertical supports in here. The spacing isn't going to stay like that, but it's just kind of a starting point. This is one of those jobs where 
getting started is the hardest bit and then once you kind of get into the swing of it and you've got a few things up to help support all the other bits then it becomes easier and easier as you go but because i was working by myself on this one what i did was i just screwed a little button to the bottom there and then i could clamp the next kind of long button onto that and then that's just temporarily held with a little bracket at the end but we're going to replace that and we're going to put a bigger vertical piece at the end there it's just i didn't have it cut at the time and it was quicker to just shove a quick little bracket in and then i'm going to have a little play around with the spacing here because i want to leave a nice big gap over here for putting an access panel so there's no use having a vertical uh, support here the original thinking of having the vertical support there was if we ever needed to get to the joint in the soil pipe but um, yeah, whatever, I don't think it's going to be a problem moving that along, having a relatively, in fact, what I can probably do is just take that one out completely, add one onto the end and just then run from there. I'm not sure. Well, I'll have a little ponder about what the spacing's going to be. You really don't need that many supports because the plasterboard's going to hold the whole thing together anyway. It's not going to be bowing or anything like that. It can't really go anywhere. But I'm probably going to go 600 spacings on the vertical supports and then I'll add a few little kind of noggin things under here just in between just to stop it moving in and out again the plasterboard itself will stop any movement under there but we'll just we'll add a couple I'm not doing them on 600s it just doesn't need that much support but I'll probably add one kind of here-ish one at the end and it's just so the boxing structure itself's got a bit of rigidity before the actual plasterboard goes up i've also got a batten across there all the way to the top of the bay window that's as far as i can do over there i can't do any more but what i can do is get all of the framework built for the boxing up to that point and then i've just got that little bit at the end to finish off <laughs> Right, that'll do for the boxing for now. That's as much as we can get done until the uh, bay window is taken out. We're just going to leave it open for the second. There's no point putting the plasterboard on quite yet because the electrician might need to get into there. I mean, he almost certainly will need to get into there. But that is absolutely solid, not going anywhere. Really quick job to shove the plasterboard up on there once the electrician's done his bit. I also need to insulate the pipe up there as well with acoustic insulation. But again, I'll not do that until the electrician's been because I don't want to kind of put anything that's going to get in this road. You kind of get a vague idea of how that's constructed. I've added these little kind of um, like spacer bits on the front. It, it really doesn't need it, but I figured I had a few off cuts and it just gives another place that you can attach the plasterboard onto. But we're on 600 centers here between the vertical supports. So for boxing like this, I mean, it's not going to go anywhere, but since I had these leftover bits and I'll have plenty more leftover offcuts once we do the other section so I'll add some little extra supports there as well but as I say that's it's overkill really we've got a couple of little spacer noggin things in the gap there just to keep everything at the right angle and over on this side I've left a nice big gap up here so that we can have an access panel and that'll give us access to any electric related stuff up there. As I say, it's one of those jobs that it's tricky when you first start, when you've got nothing to kind of attach anything onto, but the more you get done, the easier it gets. So this last little bit over the top here, that'll be dead easy because I can attach onto everything that's already in there. I've already got the top bracket in. 
all I need is a, a little support down the left hand side and a support on the wall across the back. But that'll be much later down the line once we've got all of this out. So we've got a lot of other stuff happening before that. Probably the next thing that I want to show you is all about how we're going to design the kitchen because there's decisions that we're now having to take into account for where first fix electrics and all that sort of thing are going to go and it means that we need to have a good idea of the kitchen design. For now, we will leave it there for today. If you've got any questions or comments or anything like that, pop them down below. We shall see you next time. Tatty bye.